Hi guys, <clears throat> my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist and uh, today I wanted to do a little video on the subject of pacemakers. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people have heard about pacemakers, but not many people know why they're put in, how they're put in, what they mean, and uh, that can cause considerable amounts of anxiety. So I thought I'd take this opportunity just to talk to you about some pacemakers, okay? So, um, yeah, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. This is me, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Okay, so uh, the first thing to understand is that the human heart, the heart that we're given when we're born, um, has an area which is uh, responsible for generating the electricity that makes the heart beat. And that area is called a pacemaker. And the pacemaker, um, everyone who is born has an area of the heart called the pacemaker, which uh, generates impulses and those impulses are transmitted and cause the heart to beat. All right. Uh, so the way I like to think of a pacemaker is like a man with a drum. All right. He's sitting at the top of the heart. He beats the drum. The drum, uh, the, the noise of the drum goes down a couple of cables to another man who listens out for this noise and that is called the atrioventricular node and then that he transmits that down and each impulse results in a heartbeat okay so the man beats a drum it goes down uh, another man hears it he relays it and then that generates a heartbeat um, now <clears throat> the important thing to realize is that um, the pacemaker, like anything, is prone to wear and tear. As a person gets older, the pacemaker can get sluggish. The, the man with the drum gets older and therefore he can slow down. Now, uh, other things that can cause the man with the drum to slow down is if you suffocate him. So sometimes people who have heart attacks, they can damage the pacemaker as well. But essentially what it means is that at some point, the man with the drum starts beating too slowly, all right? Uh, so he, instead of beating uh, at, say, 70 beats an hour, he can go down to 35, uh, sorry, not 70 beats, 70 beats per minute, and he can go down to 35 beats per minute, all right? Um, now, when the pacemaker becomes sluggish, what happens is the heart slows down. And at some point, the heart will slow down to the point where it is not able to push enough blood out every um, minute to be able to get the blood to the vital organs, okay? Now, the brain is the furthest away, okay, and the most sensitive to this. And often, one of the classic symptoms of a problem with the pacemaker can be sudden dizziness or sudden loss of consciousness or blackouts. A lot of people mistake blackouts with collapses, all right? A blackout is just sudden. There is no warning. You suddenly, you're awake, and then boom, you go on, you fall on the floor. And when you have a blackout, you often end up injuring yourself. Collapses are slightly different. In collapses, what tends to happen is you get a bit of a warning. You feel a bit yucky. You feel a bit weird. You, 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 you start feeling dizzy, and often people slump. So... People don't sustain injury with collapses, whereas with blackouts, they literally go down just like that, you know, and then and then as soon as they go down, they get back up, okay? So when you have a sluggish pacemaker or when the pacemaker is becoming faulty or as a result of wear and tear, uh, then it can cause people to suddenly blackout or suddenly uh, feel very vacant, you know, so they suddenly feel vacant, they feel like they're going to go, and then the guy with the drum starts beating again, and uh, the person regains consciousness, so the person feels back to normal. So that is the symptom, all right? Pacemakers, or a, a faulty pacemaker does not cause you chest pain. A faulty pacemaker does not cause you to be unduly short of breath, usually. The thing that, uh, the symptom that a faulty pacemaker usually causes people is blackouts or sudden episodes of dizziness all right um, now the important thing to realize is that the pacemaker that god gives us 
does two things. It stops the heart going too slow, all right? And therefore, if the pacemaker isn't working, the heart can go too slow. And it also stops the heart going too fast. And so it is not uncommon for people who have faulty pacemakers, and when you replace the pacemaker, for them to then develop things like atrial fibrillation later on, because um, the pacemaker that man gives us, the pacemaker that man makes, can only stop the heart from going too slowly. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, you know, um, once I have the pacemaker, will it make me feel better? And the answer is no. The pacemaker, all it does is it stays there. The pacemaker that, um, you know, the, the artificial pacemaker that we put in, it stays there and it waits for the heart to slow down excessively. And at a certain point when the heart slows down excessively, it fires. So if you're feeling dizzy from time to time and it's because of a faulty pacemaker an artificial pacemaker will stop you feeling dizzy if you're blacking out then the artificial pacemaker stops you blacking out but it doesn't otherwise make you feel any different all right so that's um, the other important thing to understand about pacemakers and they don't necessarily make you feel any better they just stop you from blacking out or falling or feeling dizzy um, then um, another question um, uh, people often ask me is, well, if I don't have a pacemaker, will I die? And the answer is no. You know, the problem if you have a dodgy pacemaker or if, you're, if your normal pacemaker isn't working is not that you drop down dead. It's more that you just fall. And if you fall, uh, usually you end up injuring yourself. So an injury can be a bad thing to have, particularly if you're older and most pacemaker related problems are in the older population. Uh, so in them, you know, you fall, you could break a hip and that can be really dangerous. So we put pacemakers in, artificial pacemakers in, to stop people falling and injuring themselves. Uh, usually, if the pacemaker doesn't beat for a certain period of time, there will be another part of the heart which will start beating and sustain a heartbeat but that heartbeat is not going to be as strong as a heartbeat that is being generated from the pacemaker that god has given us and therefore you can feel pretty awful with the with you know with a dodgy pacemaker uh, but generally you don't drop down dead of them or off a dodgy pacemaker um now um it is also important to understand that um so it's also important to try and draw a distinction between pacemakers and defibrillators. Um, uh, people often mistake the two, okay? A pacemaker stops you falling. It's done because the guy with the drum is uh, sluggish. He's slow. He's not doing his job. He's, been, he's old. And that's why you put an artificial pacemaker in. There's something called a defibrillator. Now, what a defibrillator is is it's a completely different thing okay it does do a pacemaker's role but it's something else now what happens with a defibrillator and it's really important to draw this distinction is that if you have a weak heart or if you have a heart which is very irritable um, then the heart can go into funny rhythms and because it is already weak um, and if it goes into a funny fast rhythm uh, it's beating very fast and because it's already weak it can weaken further and then you can go into horrible heart rhythm abnormalities and some of them can sometimes be incompatible with life so what a defibrillator does is it detects this and when it finds that there is a very very fast pulse uh, which is going so fast that the heart can't cope it delivers a shock and thereby saving a person's life. So that is a defibrillator. And it's important because, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, oh yeah, my cousin had a pacemaker put in. And then later on we find out that the cousin actually had a defibrillator put in. They're totally different. And it's really important to know the difference because one is put in purely because of wear and tear. Uh, you know, an ordinary pacemaker is purely put in because of wear and tear, whereas a defibrillator is put in because you have bad heart disease, structural bad heart disease or heart failure. Um, now, how uh, a lot of people then say to me, well, um, you know, what does it mean? How do you put in a pacemaker? What is a pacemaker? So I've got some pacemakers to show you today. So this is um, an old pacemaker that was that you, in the 70s. This is what a pacemaker used to look like, okay? It's got a battery in here. 
and it's got a, a program function and basically the battery the pacemaker is programmed to fire at a certain heart rate so it detects the heart rate uh, and if the heart rate falls below a certain pre-specified value then the pacemaker will fire okay this is in the 70s however things have changed now and now they're much smaller so this is the more recent pacemaker so this is the kind of pacemaker that we put in these days okay here we go so um, how is a pacemaker put in well it's put in under local anesthetic you're not put to sleep anymore it is um, a very straightforward procedure it takes about 20 minutes to do 20 to 25 minutes to do so basically i'll show you how we do this okay we give you some anesthetic here or we give the patient some anesthetic here make a little cut just over there and because you've had anesthetic it's not painful uh, then under the skin we make a little pocket with our fingers so we cut the skin and we make a little pocket here all right and then what happens is now remember we have blood vessels okay and if you follow any if you puncture a blood vessel and follow it okay it will eventually lead to the heart so what we do is we take a needle and just puncture a vein underneath the collarbone and once we've punctured the vein the blood comes out from the other end of the needle and we pass a wire like this this kind of wire through the needle all right and it goes it goes in under this and if we keep feeding it in keep feeding it in keep feeding it in it will eventually sit like this in the heart all right and and you can see that because you can x-ray the wire as you're putting it in and then once you've got that the wire is here so here i should here is the the end of the wire we connect the pacemaker on like this all right put it on the skin and stitch up and that's it 20 minutes all right um and that's what a pacemaker looks like now a defibrillator is very different a defibrillator is much bigger so this is the size of a defibrillator compared to a pacemaker all right and defibrillator is put in in exactly the same way um and um and that's about it really about pacemakers um what happens once you've got a pacemaker in well someone checks it every so often uh it can be um it can be tested by putting a remote sensor on it so you don't actually have to take anything out you can just put a sensor on it and download the information it will allow you to see what's happening with the heart at any point in time um people normally um you know someone will keep an eye every few months to make sure that the batteries are okay most pacemakers are equipped with an alarm signal which will tell you that the batteries are are nearing the end of life and usually they, the pacemakers batteries can last seven eight years um, when the uh, battery starts nearing the end of life someone will say okay the battery is coming to an end and what will we do we basically call you back all right here's your pacemaker sitting there all we do is we take this out take the pacemaker away, put, bring a new one in, connect this and stitch up. And that takes about 10 minutes to do. And that's all there is to pacemakers. So the first thing to say is it's not a big procedure. Uh, the second thing to say is um, uh, you don't die without a pacemaker, uh, but it does stop you falling. The third thing to say is that um, the symptoms associated with a problematic pacemaker are usually sudden blackouts and if you know anyone who's blacking out it's always a really important thing for them to go and see a cardiologist because it's something that you can sort out you can stop them blacking out um, now what do we do how do we know um, you know i get a lot of people who come to me and say um, you know i blacked out three weeks ago and now i'm fine uh, and I say to them, well, I don't know whether this was your heart or not, because ideally what I'd like to do is do an ECG when you black out. But, and then most people say to me, well, how do I know when I'm going to black out next time? Um, and I say to them, in which case, what you need is something called a reveal device, which is one of these. All right. And basically what this is, is it's a monitor that you can keep in you for, um, that you can keep on you for up to two years. And 
because we wanted to pick things up as they happen, we actually insert it underneath the skin. So it's always on the patient, you know, so the patient can't say, well, I forgot to carry it with me and I blacked out. So it's always on you. It's, and um, it's recording and it has an activate function where you can press a button to activate it and it has a memory. So if you collapse or black out, you can get a press a button and it will record about 30 seconds of what happened before you press the button. Uh, but equally well, it also has an auto activate function. So even if you forget to press the button, it will pick up uh, any abnormalities in your heart rhythm. And you can keep this on for two years. And that has a quite a high pickup rate of why people collapse. And if I find someone is collapsing and we don't know why they're collapsing or blacking out, and their blackouts are not very close in between and you know interspersed by a few weeks, etc. I would normally recommend a reveal device. So this is what a reveal device looks like. However, more interestingly, now they are really small, and this is how big they are now. So you can have these reveal devices put in, and they're very straightforward to put in, uh, but they will pick up the cause of uh, blackouts. Equally well, they can pick up the cause for palpitations. So if you're getting palpitations and you're struggling because no one has able, been able to catch one, uh, a reveal will, um, uh, will detect one and you can keep it on for two years. And at the end of two years, all you do is you come back and someone takes it and gets rid of it. So I hope this was useful. Um, and um, thank you for watching. All right, so just to let you know a little bit about me, uh, my name's uh, Sanjay Gupta. I'm on www.yorkcardiology.co.uk. And this is my Facebook page. And this is my secretary Jeanette's number. So thank you very much. All the best.